Pi Piggies dropping a Motion Blue latest version, 256 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 3 retro gaming image, 25,000 games. And at first look, I was like, are they doing what they did with the Odroid, which is just you know, take those base images, in this case it's Motion Blue, and the last one it was Team ORA's RetroPie image, and then just slap a bunch of games on it, and then call it a day, um, and then not really do much other than that. Or is this something special, a little bit above and beyond with the box art, the optimization, things like that. And I have to say, look at all these games. Uh, it's not just your typical Sega, Nintendo, um, Neo Geo arcade set, they threw in the hacks. They threw in, you know, everything from the calculator games, the old Apple computer games, MS-DOS games, ports, uh, Nintendo DS, Neo Geo CD. The list goes on. Whether you're looking for an image to just totally get lost in, or you're looking for a good starter image, this is definitely an image to check out. So, uh, as we get into it, just my first thoughts. It is a lot more than uh, what they did in the past, so don't let that uh, deceive you on this release. All right, so here we are all booted up in the latest version of Motion Blue. And if you're wondering what's Motion Blue, that's um, from David Marty. Uh, it's a great, great RetroPie base image that he throws a ton of extra features on it. We're going to talk about that in a second, but look at all these options you have over here. It does have a track mode, so those of you running a bar top or like that kind of blinged out a track mode, it is on here. There's also a bunch of readme files that once you open up your Pi image here and you're on the network, you're going to see some PDF files there. And there's just tons of walkthroughs of how to do this stuff. So if you're looking for a really cool base image where they teach you and there's write-ups on how to disable the sound or play with the bezels or um, you know add more games or configure the controllers for a certain system, uh, this is going to have that. I'll show you that uh, momentarily. Um, this image is called the 256 gigabyte kitchen sink build by Par Pi Piggies. And it is going to come uh, zipped up, so you're going to have to unzip it to get to the IMG file. I believe it downloads like 170 gigabytes or so. That's the benefit of compressing the images, is it doesn't take as much bandwidth as long to download. Uh, but once it's fully um, uncompressed and it's just that .img file, you're looking at a 222 gigabyte file. That's going to come out to 238,648,198,000 bytes. And uh, what we're going to do here is uh, let me just show you these options really quick so you see what you're looking with, what you're working with, and then we'll go through the games. We'll play a few games. Um, and then I want to show you those README files really quick. Um, and then we'll show you my final thoughts. But so here you go. You got background music. It is playing background music. It does have background music to start. So feel free to disable that. I just clicked here, disabled for this video. So I wasn't speaking over music. Bezel project. I haven't checked to see if that's uh, enabled yet. We'll see momentarily. Bluetooth does work. Um, boot up theme randomizers. It does have a ton of themes already installed on here. Look at all these themes. All the super sweet themes uh, pre-installed. I know some people aren't big fans of the of the particular super suites, you know, like the the specific ones because they can, um, you know, they'll take up a little bit of your screen, and a lot of people don't like that. Uh, but some other people who are big fans love it. So really cool, uh, Dwayne Hurst on the theme set here. And uh, the reason I went into the themes here was just to show you that um, a these are installed, and b you could try the boot up theme ramp to allow you to um, every time it boots up. Try a different theme. So especially if you're not necessarily married. Configuration editor, that's pretty standard. So Easy Hacks Toolkit, you click in here. If you want to expand to external hard drive, overscan, enable, disable. And the really easy aim track light gun, if you're trying to play light gun games, really easy script already on there. GPIO shutdown utility for those running on-off switches on your Pies. Uh, media removal, you add additional Hursty themes on there. Um, all your, your typical stuff does have a jukebox installed as well, so you can turn it into kind of an MP3 player, but also enjoy some music on your Raspberry Pi. And then uh, Switch Genesis to Mega Drive. This is a script from, I think, I want to say that David Marty was the one that started all that on the original Motion Blue, this script. Um, and then uh, System Information, uh, Unified Bezels, Unified Launching 
uh, videos as well. This is really cool that instead of a launching picture, you have launching videos and then Wi-Fi is working. Uh, you can go into track mode if you like. So it does have videos on here, nice. And it's really smooth. One of the issues I've had with the past Motion Blues is that it takes a long time to load up and then uh, it was a little laggy uh, and that's really like back in Motion Blue 2 and 3. You know, I know he's uh, solved that, you know, in these latest releases, but I'm just telling you, you know, on this release, it's just really peppy, really smooth. Um, whether that's placebo effect or not, that could be. Uh, okay, so here we go. So television, C3000. Uh, ScumVM 146. You also have residual VM installed as well, depending on which one you want to use. Sega 32X, 33 games, pretty standard. Sega CD, only 10. So here you're saving a little bit of space on this image. Uh, no Terminator, fail. No, I'm just kidding, it's fine. But you can totally add you know, Terminator on this image really easily. Super Famicom, 457, SG-1043. Super Game Boy. So this is kind of weird, but I guess you know if you're into that, it's basically just a big screened Game Boy. It's the same game. But hey, if you guys want to rock those games, maybe get nostalgic. There you go, Super Game Boy. Super NES 785, and it looks like the hack games are not bunched into the actual games, which is nice, because uh, 150, yeah. So and then you go over, and you got 150 hacked games. So you're gonna see like Chrono Trigger hacks, a bunch of F-Zero hacks, Super Mario, I'm sure there's a ton. Yeah, there you go, boom, Super Mario, Super Metroid, stuff like that. Those are, you know, they're cool to have. Super Nintendo, like I said, this is going to be an image where you're going to get lost in it. So, although this is the, I'm sorry, I've mixed up some television with, with this. Um, these are going to have the nice soundtracks on them, sound really nice. Um, you know, might want to check those out. So, uh, Sufami Turbo, quite a few games there. 15, Super Graphics, pretty standard 5. Uh, Super Vision 63, incredible vision. TurboGrafx CD, 47, quite a bit there. You know, you can save some space here or leave them. TurboGrafx 1694, here you go, the calculator games, TI-99. Vetrix 23, VIC-20, Commodore. We're getting old school here. Odyssey 76, Virtual Boy 23, Wondersong 109, Wondersong Color 88, Sharp X1 268. This thing's got to have like 40 or 50 systems on it. Sharp 6800 419, Infocom 30, ZX81. Uh, 68 ZX uh, Sinclair Spectrum 1112 again over 2500 games Adventure Game Studio so no um, I'm not familiar with these I'll check them out uh, but 41 no video snaps there uh, Amiga 1591 Amiga CD 94 uh, Amstrad CPC 753 by the way this is one of the cool things about the Motion Blue in the latest release it has the most system configurations. It, it can handle most artwork, most systems, and it's just really well organized. So if you're looking for these massive collections of games, uh, you know, or of systems, it doesn't matter about games, but systems, you know, this is um, this is the way to go. Arcade set 2373. Looks like we got some video snaps on there. That's nice to see. A nice arcade set. Like I said in my previous videos, arcade sets have gone a long way, so they're uh, really well done now. Emerson, 55. Wow. Uh, Bally, Astrocade. Uh, Atari 2600, 650, Atari 5281, 7858, Atari 8 bit, 647. This has like every system ever. It even has Atari XE on here. Whew. Atari ST 511, Atari Lynx 76. Um, also, the way these games are organized, I think, you know, Motion Blue has it organized in a different alphabetical order than some of the other ones, but I don't know, it's pretty good. You notice you have all your Atari systems next to each other. Sometimes they're spread around. Um, BBC Micro, uh, Commodore 64, 3000. So this kind of inflates that 25,000 number, but. All right, here we go. Philip CDI. Hotel Mario. Link the Faces of Evil. A little bit of green tear in the video. Yes, there was a Zelda. 
video at some point. Fairchild Channel 30. Radio Shack TRS 80. So great uh, graphics. Coley Co Vision 140. Daphne and they are look like they are all set up, which is nice. A lot of people like the Daphne. Um, not even familiar with this system. Not even gonna lie. I'm gonna call it Dragon, maybe. Okay, Dreamcast Five. And uh, this is part of their whole build. Is they're like, hey, well, you know, put the emulators on there. Put a few games. You guys want to add some more? Go for it. Uh, so that's why I said it's either for if somebody wants to get lost with these, and again, they're not full collections, especially, you know, as you saw, Sega CD, things like that. Uh, or, you know, you start with this, you start deleting systems, deleting games, and then you throw in the games on the other system, so you just can make it catered. Acorn Electron. Quite a name. I wonder how they came up with that one. Family Computer System 386, Family uh, Family Computer System, Family Computer Disk System 91, Game & Watch 52, Game & Gear 332, Game Boy 842, Advanced 1066, Advanced Hacks 21, Color 533, Hacks 18, Sega Genesis Hacks 225, Game Gear Hacks 4, so it is on uh, Genesis, you can switch it to Mega Drive if you want easily with the option menu, and Television 137, Sega Mark 3, uh, 58, Sega Master System 344, Genesis 904, Mega Drive Japan, nice 194, MSX 439, MSX 283, Nintendo 64, the whole lot. Nintendo DS, you do have a few games on here, and uh, you can definitely add some more. Neo Geo CD, you got seven games. Maybe play some Metal Slug later. Neo Geo 142, Nintendo 864, Nintendo Hacks 194. Jeez! Neo Geo Pocket 10, Neo Geo Pocket Killer 40, uh, Open Beats. I think this is Open Board, right? Yeah. So it does have some Open Board games as well. Very cool. Uh, Zorik 130, MS DOS 155. A lot of cool games on there Alien Breed, Alien Carnage. Uh, all those games you grew up on the computers, Commander King, Command and Conquer, uh, all that fun stuff. You probably want a keyboard or mouse for that, uh, especially a lot of them. PC Engine CD-ROM 6, PC Engine 285, PC F FX, you got a few of these on there. Uh, Commodore uh, Plus, cool to see. Pokemon Minis, I mean that's just crazy. You're really getting into the nitty gritty here. But uh, some pinball fans, you got the Pokemon Pinball. Ports, you even got some full games on here. Ridiculously Dangerous, Quake 3 Arena, which runs not very good on the Pi, but you can run it on low settings. Uh, Gianna's Return, Duke Nukem 3D, Doom, Descent, really good uh, space shooting game, kind of like a Star Wars. TIE Fighter type game. All right. And Steam Link. If you want to stream from your Steam account, you can use your Pi. PSP 5. So again, these take up a ton of space. And uh, they run decent on the Pi. PSP minis, it looks like they got all of them on here. PlayStation, we started out the video there. 10 games, Digital VM 4, another uh, Scum VM uh, emulator. And then back. To retro Within 0.4 seconds. All right, this is working good. Looks like there is no bezels. Uh, you can turn those on very easily. That sword. Ooh. Ooh, and the slide. 
Apex Legends got nothing on this. So here we are in a track mode. Here's the main menu here. I'm kind of scrolling kind of fast, but if I let it go, it'll go ahead and load up those full screen videos. It's gonna look great on a bar top or a big screen TV. Either case, do know that this is taking a lot more resources from the Pi. So, you know, the faster your SD card, um, you know, and as we get better retro, uh, Raspberry Pis, this is gonna perform a lot better. Um, but something to note too is when I go into consoles here, and now I have my PlayStation Neo Geo. This screen does load faster than the previous screen. And then when you actually go into Neo Geo, for example, here, you'll notice it gets really fast. Like this is totally great, especially for the Raspberry Pi. This is really good performance, in my opinion, of what you're seeing on your screen now. And look how beautiful this is. I mean, it gives you the nostalgia of the arcade games. If you like bling, you like things moving on the screen, lots of color, uh, you want to show off, this is definitely the way to go. Really, really cool. Those of you that have seen Hyper Spin before, you know, it's in that same kind of category. Um, really beautiful. All the same options and configurations. Works for the controller. That's all in here. You can click on a game to uh, get it started up. And, uh, or you can go back into the menus and uh, as you see this is called a nested system as you go back back you go in different categories there's like a hierarchy of organization here uh, I can go into arcades and then I'll have all my arcade based systems here CPS 1, 2, and 3 and then the collections of the different publishers um, you know and then you can go into Midway for example and then all your Midway games should be here I can hard scroll here this is just me holding down a button and then there you go so as I mentioned uh, we're really at the limits of the Raspberry Pi 3 right now. The software itself is amazing. It's just the, um, you know, the Pi itself. It's a beautiful, beautiful attract mode, though, as you see, similar to some other builds you've seen out there. And then if you want to go back to Emulation Station, you could just do that in the menu here, in the RetroPie menu, in attract mode, with those same, also the same scripts and things that you saw in Emulation Station. So you can use this image 100% in a track mode, or you can use it 100% in emulation station, or you can go hybrid on it and you know switch between the two. But as you see here, it is fully set up for both modes, uh, thus giving you, the user, uh, optimal uh, options here. So there you go. Uh, me personally, emulation station has come such a long way that you know I'm a fan of it. Uh, but you know, once there's a Raspberry Pi 4 or something a little bit, or if you do this on a PC, it's totally awesome. There'd be no reason why you wouldn't use the attract mode. Uh, the biggest downside, as you're seeing, is a little, little bit of lag, especially in the videos. You know, I'm used to it, but some people, especially the people who, you know, zero lag, it should be just like the original system. You know, sorry guys, for those people, just skip it. Don't do it. Don't use it. Move along. Nothing to see here. Here's the README file I was talking about. And as you see, it'll tell you what all the RetroArch cores are, you know, notes on setting it all up. Um, and there's a lot more information on Motion Blue. Uh, that would be specifically, if you have questions, go to Retromaniacs US, uh, the great community. They're really making this build amazing. As you see, look at all the systems here. Just support for every single one of them. Um, and again, Sega Saturn doesn't run well on the Pi. Take note, people. Um, but, you know, anytime you can use a Libretro core, it's better for your controls. It's better overall experience. Uh, so that's why you're noticing a lot of them have LR before them as far as, um, you know, the core. And then you'll see usually they choose that one. All right, everyone. Closing remarks. I think this image is perfectly labeled. 
as the kitchen sink image, 256 gigabyte, which as I mentioned in previous videos is the new 128, 256 gigabyte micro SD cards are easy to get and the price is low, they're nice and fast. Speaking of which, the faster the micro SD card, the better if you can get those ultra performance, um, you know, the plus type cards, you will have a better experience as far as boot times, loading times. This image is a little slow booting up and that's because it's just, it's just bloated with systems and games. So there's a lot of reading that this image has to do. So with all that said, if you're looking for a kitchen sink image already, all the ROM, every single, pretty much every single ROM pack in existence that works for the current Raspberry Pi 3, this is the image for you. It's really great. Um, I believe, you know, from what I saw, all the shaders and the bezels are not enabled, but all the software is included. So it's a really quick on off switch for you with all that. Now, do note that this is based off the latest Motion Blue from uh, David Marty. It's beautiful. The Retromaniacs people made ROM packs for this whole uh, front end Motion Blue. And so what Pi Piggies did here is they um, added some of the some of the full ROM packs and some partials, but basically got it all up and running for you. So it's another step further uh, for those of you that don't feel comfortable. But I think the majority of you who are like purists, you want the perfect image. What you're going to want to do is start with a fresh Motion Blue install. Go ahead and just grab the ROM packs you want. So go grab MS DOS and all the Nintendo and Sega games. If you don't care about any, you know, older computer-based systems, just don't put the ROM pack on there. Uh, it's going to help with your boot times. It's going to help free up some space for other systems and uh, you won't get lost in all of these games. Now this is alphabetical order as you see, so you know I kinda know where I'm going. You know, it's not like I'm lost, but for somebody new or somebody who doesn't know a lot of these systems, um, you could definitely get lost in here uh, very easily. Um, another option, um, you know, if you don't want the image as is or you don't want to start with a fresh image, uh, the last option would just be get this image and then delete what you don't want. Just go into the network, go ahead and delete the games, the emulators, that you're not interested in and set that up. Um, as you saw, it works for the track mode. Um, the arcade set was working for me. Um, a lot of them were based on MAME 2003 and a couple other emulator cores. You can definitely change those cores out by pressing A when you boot up. Um, something I was impressed by this image is that it does have literally every single bell and whistle I can think of from a track mode to pre-built scripts, things like that. Uh, so it's, it's fully decked out in uh, in those respects. So with all that said, you know, I got to give this one an A, especially for what it's trying to be. It's just trying to be a, a kitchen sink motion blue build, and it definitely delivers on that. So shout out to Pi Piggies for that. But I also want to um, give a shout out to the, the people's original work, like Dwayne Hurst with all the theme work and the theme randomizer. And then you have Easy Hacks with his toolkit. And then you have David Marty and Retromaniacs USA, who put a lot of work into building this kind of ultimate do everything for every system uh, retro pie build. So with all that said, that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.